Hi everyone, this is GKCS. We are talking about a new technique today called meet in the middle and this is very similar to divide and conquer. Uh, let's have a look. Let's take an example now which is trying to find four numbers in an array such that number A plus number B plus number C plus number D is equal to some sum. Okay, capital S. So these four numbers A, B, C and D belong to an array uh, Let's call it P to avoid confusion. So P is an array which needs to contain these four numbers and we need to find the four numbers satisfying a given sum. So the brute force way to do this of course, the absolute brute force way to do this is to search for all numbers A in this array P and let's say P has size N. Then this gives us that to find that A we need to do N operations. For each of these operations, we need to find a particular B, which is going to take n more operations, another C, n more operations, and D. So this is going to be n into n into n into n, which is order n raised to the power 4. So how can we improve on this? So let's try to simplify the problem. Let's say that a plus b is equal to some variable x and c plus d is equal to some variable y. So what you have is x plus y should be equal to this constant sum s which has been defined, predefined in the question. So you are seeing x can take n square values because a and b are taking values from your original array p. So if x can take n square values and y can take the exact same n square values. Right? Each of these sets is of size n square. But if you change the equation again, what you get is x is equal to s minus y. I just put y on the right hand side. And s minus y then can take n square values itself. So if I give s minus y a particular value alpha, you have x is equal to alpha. Have a look at this equation. What you're trying to do is find some values x which match alpha. That's all. A very simple equation. What are the number of values that x can take n square? So why not iterate them all out? We go over all the values that a plus b can take. So in this array, we can just have a for loop for every element between i 0 to n and then for every element between j i plus 1 to n. Just note down all values. So just store the possible values of x. Let's say that's a list x dot add. What do we have? Um, P of i plus P of j. That's it. That's all you do. And what you have now is in this set x, you have stored all values that, that the variable x can take. Let's, let's call this capital X. So in, in this set x, you have all the values that small x can take. Okay. In the exact same way, in the very next line rather, you can, you can say that alpha so let's call the set alpha uh, will add this variable s minus p of i plus p of j so what you ju just did is you took values c plus d okay and subtracted that from s and you're adding that to one of the values that alpha can take because that's exactly what it is, right? S minus Y is the value that alpha can take. So now that you have these two sets, you have two sets of size n square each. Okay, so uh, capital X and alpha are two sets having size n square each. And you need to find the intersection of these two sets, which is actually very, very simple because what you can, one, one idea is just sorting x and sorting alpha and then finding out the common elements. You can do that in a pretty efficient way. But even better would be if you use a hash set. A hash set in which you pick up every element of x, each and every element of x, and you check if it exists in alpha. If it exists in alpha, then you have one combination already done. Okay, so that's how simple it is for every element in x. You search in alpha if that element exists. If it exists, you have one possibility in it. 
So another thing you need to notice is what if they ask you to find A, B, C and T? Well that can be done pretty easily too because when you're storing in X, this is just a set so I'm adding but you can store it in a map also. So for every key you can store the possible values that it can have. Uh, in fact the code in the description is going to have that, um, that map implementation because the set implementation is a little simplistic. So what you see is that from n raised to power 4, which is the original complexity, we have moved to x equal to alpha, which we saw is comparing two sets, uh, finding the intersection of two sets rather, and each element is going to take you order 1 time. Uh, the number of elements in this set x is order n square. So multiplying these two, we get from n raised to power 4 as your complexity, we have changed that to n raised to power 2. So before we move to the more interesting example, let's try to understand what meter in the middle actually is. Uh, it's taking a larger problem, breaking it into two parts, like we saw, and then trying to find a solution for those two parts efficiently. Again, like we saw, in just order one time, you were able to compare each element and therefore you got down the time complexity. So in general, you'll see meter in the middle bring down the time complexity from some number a raised to the power b to a raised to the power b by 2. That's what it does because what you do is you break it into two sets and you try to merge them efficiently. This merging operation is usually done on aggregate functions. Okay, remember that aggregate functions are things like summing, which we did here exactly, summing. Uh, there's average, there's finding the minimum, there's finding the maximum, and so on and so forth. You can have a list of the aggregate functions which are used in the database as an example, but uh, two sets, try to merge them, Using an aggregate function, probably meet in the middle is the way to go. Except when things are very simple. Because a raised to the power b has to be pretty small for you to even bring it down to a raised to the power b by 2 and still keep it you know, useful. If I give you a as 2 and b as 100, so that is 2 raised to the power 100, even if I bring down the complexity to just 2 raised to the power 50, this cannot be computed by modern computers. It's a very, very large number. So, meet in the middle is more sensible when uh, B is somewhere around 60, let's say. So, you can bring this down to just 30, and uh, this can be computed in approximately one second. Okay, so now let's move on to the more interesting example. Let's have a look at the knapsack problem. You have n items, and each of these items has a price and it also has a weight. So you can have a look at the description below for a detailed description of this problem. It's a very common one. You can carry at most capital W weight and you want the maximum price of these items that you can get. So the, the standard brute force way to do this is 2 raised to the power n. This is the order complexity because you are trying to pick up each item, take its price into account, take its weight into account and check whether you can pick up the entire set or not. Another famous approach to this is a pseudo polynomial approach which is order capital N into capital W uh, and this is usually much more efficient but W can be pretty large so if I if I put W as 10 raised to the power 50 you're in big trouble and in fact 10 raised to the power 50 isn't required really but yeah in general if W is large then you never know uh, what the order complexity will be so this is pseudo polynomial in the sense that it seems polynomial but this is also a variable Okay, so we are going to use mean to middle here. What you can do is put out all the items in front of you. Okay, let's say you have n items, put them out as n by 2 and n by 2 items. Again, two sets which you need to combine. And how do you combine them? Well, you just add the prices of the two items and also add the weights of the two items. So it's pretty simple. Now, these two sets are going to be containing some items. Let's, let's say 1, 2, 8. 17, so on and so forth. And here there'll be 22, 30, 31, etc. But important to know is that the number of the, the indexes of these items can go from 0 to n by 2, and from here they can go to n by 2 plus 1 to n. So that's very important. You've completely separated the two sets, and now you're trying to merge them together. Okay, so 0 to n by 2. Exact same logic as in the brute force knapsack. How many possibilities of sets can you have? 2 raised to the power n by 2 sets. 
And the exact same logic here says 2 raised to the power n by 2 sets can be made through brute force for these two sets. Okay, or the sizes of the two sets are 2 raised to the power n by 2. Now, for each, each entry in this set, you need to have the total price of all items. Okay, and the total weight of all those items. So, total price and total weight. That's all you need to have. So, this will be a pair, total weight, comma, total price, for each entry in this set of size 2 is 5 by 2. And the exact same here. So, you have two sets and now you're going to merge them. And the lights are on. So, the, the pairs here that you have in this set are exactly similar to the pairs that we have in this set, which is total weight and total price for each entry. And when you're trying to merge these two sets, you take every entry in this set, okay? Check for every entry in the other set, whether the total weight, so I'll just call it TW, total weight from the first set plus total weight from the second set should be less than or equal to the maximum weight that you can carry and total price from the first set plus total price from the second set. If this condition satisfies, you check for this. If this is greater than the maximum price you are getting till now, so maximum price initially will be zero. Uh, if this condition occurs, then you just set max price to total price one plus total price two. Okay, so this happens for every entry in the first set. Now, of course, if you're doing this in a brute force way, it's not going to work because number of entries here are 2 raised to the power n by 2. Uh, for every entry, you're checking 2 raised to the power n by 2 entries, which is going to be overall time complexity of order 2 raised to the power n. And then by default, the brute force itself, uh, you can do this smarter. You see that for every entry here, we are searching for corresponding entries in the second set. But in the brute force way, it's taking too much time. So what you can do is sort these entries, sort them by the total weights. Why by the total weights? Because your condition, your first condition is that the total weight of one and the total weight of two, the sum of these two has to be less than W. So the total weight of one is known to you. This TW1, capital W minus TW1 is equal to some number x for every entry. So you have these. Uh, and now you can binary search for x. So this is the maximum weight that you can carry, maximum tw2 weight that you can carry. So because you have sorted this second set by the total weights, once you get this entry, once you get the insertion point basically, you go there and all entries above it are fine. They are okay you have to check with all entries about this particular entry that you found having weight less than or equal to x okay so now amongst these entries you want the minimum let's not do that let's not do that immediately let's look at the second entry that we have again it will have a particular total weight again you're going to do the same thing you're going to find this value x for it because w minus the total weight of this is going to give you a new value of x which you will search let's say it falls over here and let's say you do the same thing for the third one, it falls over here, so on and so forth. But the interesting thing is that whenever you find the entry, all values above it are to be considered, all values below it are not to be considered. And which values above it? Well, amongst the values above it, what you want is the maximum price. Okay, the, the entry which gives you maximum price having total weight less than the value of x. Okay, let's... If that's clear, then the whole problem is very simple actually. After you've sorted them, you just need to find the prefix minimums. The prefix minimums means basically uh, from, from this point to a point i. So for every point i, what you try to do is you find the, in fact, the prefix maximums, sorry. So it's maximums. Uh, because you're trying to find the maximum price, yeah. So, uh, for every entry, you check that if it is the maximum till now, and if it is, of course, you set it as a maximum, otherwise you keep moving forward, that's all. The super code for prefix maximums is very simple. 
what you do is till now for i equal to 0 to n you have an array of prefix maximums like we said so if the prefix maximum up to point i minus 1 is actually less than the current element which is let's say p of i okay if this happens then prefix of i should be equal to p of i otherwise prefix of i is equal to prefix of i minus 1 so this will run from 0 to n this is an order n computation and because when i say order n it's basically the size of the set so because this set is of size 2 raised to power n by 2 this is order 2 raised to power n by 2 so you find the prefix maximums you have sorted this set after that you find the prefix maximums and for every element in this set you find the corresponding prefix maximum entry in the insertion point that we found earlier okay i'll just write that down because it's confusing sometimes so using this technique and after iterating over all elements you will find the best possible value which satisfies this constraint and has the maximum price so the knapsack problem will be solved having complexity generating the set takes order 2 raised to power n by 2 time the same for this set and finding the prefix sums uh, the prefix uh, maximums is 2 raised to power n by 2 so this is 3 into 2 raised to power n by 2 which is a constant factor it will get out plus 2 raised to power n by 2 into log of 2 raised to power n by 2 why is that? because we sorted this set Okay, sorting is n log n for a set of size n and this is what your set size is so this is the overall time complexity of the algorithm and well uh, not really for every element you're finding your binary searching in this set so binary search takes log n time where n is the size of the set so for every element which is going to give you plus n into binary search in this set size so of course I, I keep getting confused it's actually size of the set so 2 raised to power n by 2 into log of 2 raised to power n by 2 okay so this is the overall time complexity and that is equal to 2 raised to power n by 2 into 3 can be ignored because you have 2 raised to power n by 2 in common these two factors are again common so that constant will also go out you have log of 2 raised to power n by 2 which is going to be n by 2 itself okay so overall time complexity finally comes out to be 2 raised to power n by 2 into n so that's the final time complexity of and it's improved from order n into 2 raised to power n okay this is a factor of n also when you are doing the standard knapsack problem, 0, 1 knapsack problem. So we have brought down the time complexity by quite a bit actually because if n is 30 then this is going to time out in most computers, it's going to take about 30 seconds and this is going to take much much smaller time. So this is a significant improvement as long as n is small enough. Okay, uh, one of the scenarios you can try is bidirectional BFS where meet in the middle does work. And you can also try something like traveling salesman using meet in the middle where I don't think meet in the middle will work. So that's it for meet in the middle. If you have any doubts or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you want notifications for further videos, you can subscribe. And I'll be sharing the code and element links in the description below. So until next time, see you.